Hi there and welcome. Today I have the perfect solution for you coming up. If you really want to make a tote, a fat quarter bundle will solve the problem. The coordinating fabrics are already grouped together. They're already cut up. You can just easily grab a bundle and some coordinating fabric and walk out without having to stand at the counter to have your fabric cut. I use fat, fat, I use five fat quarters today to make this adorable little tote in coordinating fabrics from fat quarters. You can make this tote with four fat quarters if um, you don't make the pocket. I made a little loop on the inside to hang keys. I made a bonus key fob holder to latch onto that hook with some extra fabric. So you won't have a whole lot of fabric left over from this project. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Supplies that you'll need are some pins or clips, whichever one you prefer. Rotary cutter, the mat and ruler are also helpful. Some snips and then I like to use some non-fabric scissors on the zipper. I'm using a 14 inch zipper tape with a zipper head, but if you want to find just a, a regular zipper that's also fine. This is a number five zipper. And then last but not least is the seam ripper. A two by four inch piece piece of fabric. This would be for a loop to affix your key fobs or keys to. And I'm actually going to be making with the extra fabric a key fob holder to go around the wrist. I'm going to be using a piece that is 17 inches by 2 inches wide and 3 quarters of an inch lobster claw clasp. So instead of making your straps, you can use canvas strapping and if that was the case you could potentially get away with using four fat quarters but i'm actually going to sew and show you how to sew the straps in a coordinating fabric now to maximize the use of your fat quarters i'm going to show you a layout of how i cut mine out to maximize the use of the fat quarters okay so that you can see the layout i'm just using an extra fat quarter one point i want to make is that when you get the fat quarters they're not squared so you'll need to make sure that you trim it and make sure that all the sides are squared off so let me show you a good layout for the first fat quarter it would be one exterior panel two of the bottom pieces and the optional key fob strap. For the second fat quarter, you could use one of the exterior panels, one of the straps, and then one of the recessed zipper panels. For the third fat quarter, you could get one of the lining pieces in, one of the main lining pieces in, and three of the recessed zipper panels. Okay, so for the fourth fat quarter, I was able to get one of the lining pieces, one of the strap pieces, and the little rectangle for the loop. For the fifth fat quarter, I laid out the two pocket pieces. So you can see if you don't add a pocket, you could get away with the four fat quarters. That's another option, or you have some leftover fabric for a different project. Okay, so you'll need four panels measuring 11 by 15 inches, two for the lining, and two for the exterior. Each will be lined with interfacing. You'll need two panels for the bottom measuring 10 inches by five inches, and both of those will be lined with interfacing. You'll need four panels for the recessed zip panel measuring three inches by 15 inches. Interfacing is optional. So for the straps, you'll need two straps measuring four inches by 21 inches long. And for the interfacing, you can cut the same size. I cut them a little bit shorter so that it would reduce the bulk in the seams. You'll need two rectangles for the pocket panels measuring seven inches by 10 inches and both of those will be also interfaced. So after you've prepared all your materials, the first step is to interface all your pieces of fabric. Okay, so while you're at the ironing board, now is a good time to prepare the straps as well as the little loop. And both are done the same way. So I'll show you with one of the straps. You will want to press it in half all the way across and then you're going to take the edge and press it to the center and you're gonna repeat it on the other side as well. 
So then you'll turn it around and press the other exterior in towards the center as well to meet the other edge and press. You'll want to press each of the short edges in by a quarter of an inch. Go ahead and fold it in half, place a clip on it and repeat all the way down. Okay, so for the loop, you're gonna repeat the same process by pressing it in half and then bringing in the edges to the center and then pressing it in half again. And then you can just fold it like so into a loop and clip it. Okay, next I'm gonna take the little loop and I'm going to stitch across the bottom, just a basting stitch to hold the loop together so it makes it easier when we place it in the seam. So I'm gonna turn the stitch length to 2.5 and I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, go down the other side and you want to go down the same way you went down. You don't wanna flip it around and go down because you'll get twisting. So I came down this way the first time and I'm gonna go down the same way on this side and back stitch at the beginning and end. So now for the pocket pieces, grab your two pocket panels. Okay, so I hope you can hear me. I, the neighbor just started weed whacking, chainsawing, not sure which one, but I hope you can still hear me. Okay, so for the pocket, I pinned with a little bit of a gap. It's about a three inch gap. And what I'm going to do is stitch at a half inch in all the way around back stitching before the pin to secure it and make it stronger. That way when I go to turn it, it won't rip. So I'm going to back stitch, go all the way around, come to the pin, back stitch again. Okay. I'm not sure who's loudest, the sewing machine or the chainsaw. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to turn the pocket. Just grab anything that you have, um, chopstick, anything that's not so pointy that it'll puncture when you go through. You just have to be really gentle in the corners. This is my husband's, looks like a file of some sort. But anyway, I, I find that it works well because the tip is somewhat rounded. So flip the pocket inside out. Oh, actually, before you do that, I forgot. You wanna trim the corners a little bit. That way it'll be nice and pointy. So like that on all four corners. That'll just reduce the bulk. You can even trim down the sides a little bit to reduce the bulk. Okay. Oh, that was perilously close. <laughs> Don't cut into the seam. Hopefully I didn't cut through, but anyway. <laughs> okay, now you can flip it. Oh, I love these colors, they're yummy. I think that's one of my favorite colors. I like the pinks and the greens together. Perfect for summer. Well, perfect for any time, really. And then you can press it. That way it'll be ready um, to attach to the panel. And then just push your corners out gently. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time that I poked a corner all the way through and then I had to just re-sew it. Yeah, look at the yummy colors. Can't help but feel happy when I see those colors. Okay, so I'm just pressing the pocket. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you when pressing your pocket, and I'll come closer so you can see, you want to fold the seams in so that when I, you, I go to stitch this onto the pocket, I can just, it'll be nice and straight all the way across. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
add some decorative top stitching right now so take care of that and that way all I have to do is attach it to the panel and then it'll be ready to go so for the top stitch I'm going to do it at a three millimeter stitch length an eighth of an inch in from the edge all right now let's move on to <laughs> let's move on to the bag assembly so next i'm going to grab one of the exteriors and i'm going to grab the pocket and place it and center it wherever it looks good just want to make sure that i have enough for the seam allowance is going to be half an inch so i want to make sure that it's up high enough and that it's equal distance from the bottom same distance yep and then just making sure that it's about the same on both sides so it's three and a quarter and three and a quarter and then just pin it anybody feel like summer yet with these colors clearly i must like that shade of green <laughs> okay so i'm going to take it over the sewing machine and stitch around the three sides back stitching at the beginning and end and so when you stitch across the bottom this is going to secure the bottom of the pocket closed and i'm going to stitch at a three millimeter stitch length about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the pocket well i went wonky just then. <laughs> it's like i took a detour Okay, I just spaced out. <laughs> mm, it's a little rough. Maybe I'll go back and fix it. Hence why I keep a seam ripper right here. Again, it's just really important to backstitch on the ends of the pocket because when you are opening and closing the pocket, that is where all the stress is and you don't want it to tear open. That's better fixed it. Okay, so next you wanna take the panel that I just sewed the pocket on and then you want to make sure that you place the two exterior pocket bottoms towards each other so in other words the pocket opening needs to be this facing this way and the bottom of the pocket is facing the bottom of the other exterior panel then you want to grab one of the bottom pieces and find the middle point and notch it out. You can notch it out or mark it if you'd like. Just fold it in half. On both sides you want to find the center part. Repeat the same for each of the exterior panels. And both my lining bottom parts... <laughs> both the... <laughs> lining and the exterior of my bottoms are the same yours might be different depending on what fabric you choose for the lining so you'll need to mark all the bottom pieces or both of the bottom pieces in half and just place a halfway mark with the two exterior panels butted up to each other just double check yep they're butted up the pockets facing towards the outside grab one of the pieces so right now i'm working on the exterior panel so this is my exterior bottom and i'm gonna lay it face down matching the markings or the notches and clipping okay so right sides are facing then peel back the bottom and you're gonna place the other side and line it up flip it over so that you can match those marking points again for the other side and clip so you can see that once it's turned out it'll look like and I'd like that. Okay, so I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and stitch at a half inch from the edge with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length on both sides. Okay, and the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to press. Now that I've stitched, it looks like this. I will trim all these threads. 
but you want to press the seam allowances in towards each other like so, so that when you top stitch, they'll be caught on the bottom. Press. Okay, now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and top stitch with a three millimeter stitch length, one eighth of an inch from the edge, all the way down on both sides. Grab your panel and I'm gonna fold it in half and match the seams and clip. Okay, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew down both sides with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length, half an inch in from the edge. All right, so now grab your main exterior. It's time to attach the straps. So turn your panel the right side out. You could do this step also at the beginning so you don't get anything caught but this will work as well because nothing is closed yet. Okay, so grab your straps and you're gonna place the strap three and a half inches in from the edge or wherever you like it. I like to line it up with the pocket and just clip through the top part, not through the bottom part. And just so you can see, this is actually more like two and a half, about two and a half inches in. Now take into account if you attach the straps early on before you've done all this, um, there, you know, part of it's going to be a seam allowance. So your distance is variable depending on um, one, how you like the look, but two, um, you want to make sure that whatever distance you pick on this side, you're picking the same distance on the other side. And you also wanna make sure that it's laying flat and that it's not turned. I think that looks about good. Let's see how far this is. It's about two and a half as well. And clipping it. Now I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine and I'm going to base at quarter inch in with a three millimeter stitch length. And then it's gonna be sewn again once we assemble the bag. So I'm flipping it over and repeat the same process, lining up the straps, making sure that they're the same distance as what was on the front of the bag. Now when you take it over to the sewing machine and you're stitching across, make sure you're only stitching across the single layer and not both layers and sewing your bag shut. And repeat for all of the handle edges. Okay, so the next step is to box the corners while they're still inside out and separate. So just grab some clips. You're just gonna grab each one of the corners and sort of pull them into a straight line and clip with the seam splayed open for all four sides for the exterior as well as the lining. All four corners are boxed. Now take them to the sewing machine and stitch across with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length at about half an inch in. Hope you can still see I had one light go out of commission. Back stitching at the beginning and end. Double check to make sure everything got and repeat for the lining as well. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to preparing the recessed zipper panels. Grab all four pieces of the recessed zipper panel and stack them together. Okay, then I'm gonna take a ruler and mark a three quarter inch by three quarter inch square. And then I'm gonna cut the little squares out. Take your pieces and it's gonna look like an H. The shorter sides are gonna be facing each other. You wanna make sure that you have the zipper panels facing right sides of the fabric to each other. So just flip them around like so, and then just kind of stagger them back from each other. I'm gonna place the zipper face down on the short end, and it's okay if it hangs off on the end. I cut mine a little bit longer, but you're essentially going to make a zipper sandwich 
So you're gonna restack the top on and then going to make sure that everything is lined up on the end and clip all the way across. You just wanna make sure that your zip, zip hasn't shifted down as you're pinning across. Stitch all the way across with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And I'm going to stitch at about a quarter inch in from the edge of the zipper tape. Okay, so back stitch at the beginning and end. And depending on your machine, you probably want to attach your zipper foot for this part. Okay, so now I've sewn all the way down. And then you can take it to the ironing board and press wrong sides together, or you can finger press and clip however you feel comfortable. And then I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and top stitch all the way down about an eighth of an inch in from that folded edge with a three millimeter stitch length. So I'm gonna repeat the process of sandwiching it for the other side. Now that you have this panel done, grab the other side of the H and you're going to have one side facing up. You're gonna take the panel and place it right sides facing down. And then you're going to take the other short side, right sides facing down to match the other side, forming a zipper sandwich with the right sides facing each other and making sure that the ends match up. You could also use double-sided tape to secure, like put a strip of double-sided tape so it doesn't shift. That's another option. Okay, so there we go. So you can always double check and make sure that you've got it pinned the right way by flipping these out and that's correct. You should have the wrong sides inwards. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch down. Uh, I'm gonna uh, zip down at about a quarter, no pun intended. And then I'll flip it right side out, press it, and then top stitch it. Don't forget to change your stitch length back to 2.5 from the last time when we top stitched. This is a sewing stiletto. I'm just holding it to help feed it through. You could also use a flat head screwdriver. Whip out the pieces and iron and then top stitch down with a three millimeter stitch length. Okay, so grab your zipper. If you're using zipper tape, now's the time to put the zipper head on. If you just had a standard zipper, then you don't have to worry about this part. You're gonna take the right sides, put them facing each other, and then the bottom lining sides together. And it's gonna be kind of like a little butterfly. You're gonna clip the edges together. Okay, so I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch at a half inch seam allowance, only stitching the legs of the H, if you can kind of see the H. So you're gonna just stitch along that side and along this side, not across the zipper. Kind of a little bit awkward. Okay, so next, you're gonna kind of flip it to where the zipper is facing up and it's gonna make like an arrow shape and you want to do that for both sides and it'll naturally want to fall that way so you kind of flatten out the zip and you're gonna make a pointy arrow and clip like that you want the seam to splay open on both sides like that so when you stitch across gonna be nice and flat. So get your arrow flattened out and clipped. And take it to the sewing machine and sew across, catching both splayed open sides across there. I'm gonna move the clips down so I can, they're not in the way. Make sure that both sides are pressed open. I'm gonna stitch across about a half inch in. Now my zipper tape, I cut longer so it's over further, but we're going to go over it one more time just for reinforcement. OK, 
Okay, now you can cut the zipper so that when you take the clips off, you're gonna have like a little box looking thing. Same thing on the back side. And when you turn it up, it's kind of like a little scoop that's gonna be going inside of your bag and the zipper tape end is closed as you can see. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat the same process for the other side. It's time to place the recessed zipper in. Make sure your recessed zipper is open and you're gonna line everything up with the edges, making sure that your seam is lined up. You want to make sure that the, the seam is splayed open on both sides to reduce the bulk and double check to make sure everything's lined up. So I'm going to grab some pins and I'm going to place a pin on either side of that center point to make sure that nothing's shifting. Just one side. And repeat for the other side as well. Now at this point, I'm going to insert the little loop that I made and I'm going to have it come down at some point in here, wherever you'd like. Plop the, the loop in like that, plop. You'll have the loop coming down, pointing down inside of the bag. That way you can hook your keys on like so. So I'm just going to clip that in. Make sure I have left enough room on both sides. I didn't. So hold on. Let me just make sure all of that's laying flat there like that and clip. And then I'm going to go around all the way around clipping, making sure everything's matching up nicely and that the edges are matching up. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and get that all sewn up. Okay, so we're on the home stretch. Now open up the lining and the lining has the right side facing in. You're gonna slip the finished exterior inside of the lining. And you wanna make sure that your handles are tucked inside. Okay, and you just wanna make sure that you have your right sides together. Gonna to match up the seams. I like to match the sides first and then clip the rest of it. And I'm actually going to use pins on either side to make sure that it doesn't move. Okay, I'm going to take it back to the machine and stitch. And I'm just gonna go inside from where I stitched previously. That way when we, I flip it up inside or the right side out, you won't see this line of stitching. So I'm gonna just go just past it. So just past half an inch. And I'm gonna use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Just make sure you're not sewing through the bottom part too. Okay, so now it's time to flip the bag through the opening that we left. Time to press the lining in. Once I close the lining up, I just wanted to inspect everything and make sure everything's okay. Yeah, everything looks good. So the next thing is to take and turn in the edges of the side, the turning gap. Okay, it's all closed. Pin everything once again, and then I'm gonna top stitch it. And the bottom part needs to just be out of the way. Just making sure that the bottom doesn't roll out. Keep checking to make sure nothing's underneath. 
You want to make sure that your straps are coming out and not getting caught. If you're making this with me, just grab your loop. I'm gonna put the top of the loop about an inch up from the bottom. Put on the lobster claw and then fold that bottom part up and then turn it under by about a quarter of an inch and then stitch across. Material is thicker. You can length, lengthen the. You can length. You can length. You can lengthen the stitch length. You can make the stitch length longer. <laughs> okay, you get the picture. Chainsawing or weed whacking. I just went and took a peek. I think it's a baby chainsaw. So anyway.